All right, got our first one. Start the day off with an easy mulligan. Uh, yeah, this hand's fine, right? It's like this into this. Can't cast this until we draw a land, but. Yeah, I think putting a combo in a deck like this is just not necessary. I think I'd rather just have, like, generically good magic cards. Like, Spike, Spike Feeder and Archangel's Dune are, like, pretty, pretty terrible magic cards. First card quality goes. Now, I mean, we're not playing the Temple on one because I want to play the Voice on two. So drawing a second temple is actually pretty bad here because we want to draw a land. We want it to be green. So we actually want any of our non-temple lands, right? Everything except temples makes green man on our deck at this point. I mean, like, having eight reality smashers in our deck lets us win pretty often. I think that enables, like, more than enough free wins in this format. Uh, bad modern decks are basically bad modern decks forever. Just... Alright, so I just topped the bird because um, I'm fetching anyways, so if there was something I wanted there, maybe we wouldn't fetch. Alright, we know there's not a we know there's not a thing on top, so let's just go ahead and do this. Grab a temple garden. So he says. Hey. Alright, so doop. And a boop a doop. This guy's pretty good, because even if they have, like, a Searing Blaze, we still get a blocker out of it. This is a good die roll to win. Play versus draw is probably a big difference in this matchup. I'm on a red burn, maybe? Block. Pro tip, block. Block early, block often. A third Eldritch Revolution on top of our deck isn't particularly good. Oh, they're playing Goblins, not Burn. Okay, interesting. Probably slightly better for us? I don't actually know. Alright, turn three Thought Nuts here on the play is probably great. Reckless, Bushwhacker, Goblin Bushwhacker, Simeon Spirit Guide. I mean, I guess this is just, like, strictly better than this one, right? I guess this one has two power on its own. This one has one power on its own. I guess I'll take... I'll take that one since it's got more power in the long term. Awesome, SoCal. I'm glad you enjoyed that. It's always nice to hear that feedback. I'm glad people get value out of the YouTube stuff. I don't stream with music because, like, it's stealing and wrong, but like, YouTube's a happy upside as well. Uh, I'm not going to attack here. I feel like we're just, like, super favored if we go long, right? So let's just, like, be a little conservative here. I don't know. It depends on how this first league goes, Monk. If this first league goes okay, I'm probably going to... We found a one-drop here. Oh, they're just casting the ape, sure. Reality Smusher's pretty good. Um, I think I'm just playing the Smusher on defense, right? I feel like we're just gonna like get a Thrag Tusk, and, like a Displacer here at some point. I'm just like, these are my things, my things are amazing. I feel like they're just like not gonna be able to pound through what we do. Hopefully we draw like a Battery Shaper or something like that. Infect is sweet. I think it was a lot of fun. Jesus. Um, okay, so... I can attack for three and then turn this into a voice of resurgence. That doesn't seem terrible. And, like, the next turn I can turn that voice into a... Um, another Thought Nuts here. Ancient Tomb's legal and modern because Watsi doesn't care. But, you know, as long as they don't care, we're going to play the good cards. Is what it is what it is. 
Go forest, tap that for just one. Reason not to attack with the Smasher. Just like, ask myself the question, how, how do I lose this game? And the question on how do I lose this game is I get I play a little bit too aggressively. So there's no there's no reason for me to be for me to be super aggressive. Just I'm I'm gonna win the game if it goes long, but might as might as well just like hang out and be a little bit conservative while I play here. Uh yeah, I'm just gonna turn this into something. So what do I want to get with this? I could get It could get Thought Nuts here. I know they have a Bushwhacker in their hand. I could also just like get Displacer and then like find Thrag with the Thought Nuts here. Cause like, what are the odds I die next turn? Like exceedingly low? Their hand is Bushwhacker plus one card I don't know. And like, if I get Displacer here, I'll have like Reality Smasher or this to throw away. The problem is that like getting Displacer with Ragtusk like kind of puts us in a bad spot against Lightning Bolt. And like, maybe they could sneak out a win at that rate. I'm just gonna get a Thought Knots here. I think that's, I think that's the conservative play. Yeah, we'll just get back voice might have been okay too. All right, now I have a bunch of four fours. I think this turn I'm gonna start attacking with the Smasher. A lot of Bushwhackers. Um, It's 2-0 for each other attacking Goblin. So if they... I'm actually going to attack with this one. Yeah, I'm going to attack with this one instead of the Smasher. Because this way, if they want to kill my Thought Nuts here, they have to trade both their Goblin Pile Drivers for it. And if they trade off both their Goblin Pile Drivers on this board, they are not going to be in a good spot. And then, like, next turn, if they rip another Goblin, they could go Bushwhacker plus Goblin and attack, and then I can trade Reality Smasher Elemental for the Pile Drivers, and then have this eat here, and then just take whatever little bit of damage they have over here, and I have two Thought Nuts here left on the board, plus an Evolution in hand. Yeah, I mean, Gucci's post was just, like, the classic, I, I, I play a lot of Legacy, I've never played this deck before, so I'm going to make changes before actually playing it, just because, like, Emrakul looks better than Worm on paper, right? But shouldn't do that, especially in a format like Legacy. Like, you'll often hear me say on this stream, like, we're just playing a deck list card for card because I don't understand this deck, so we're getting a feel for it. We're doing okay. Life's swell. In some playing some more modern. Wow, that's really good. Um, this lets them play this. Well, we're not playing that. Okay. Huh. All right. Another Eldrazi Temple is not great. If I Oasis Smasher and Smash, then I have three blockers back. That's probably fine. This is a dual land that randomly pumps my creatures. Like, I think we're going to here.
Hey, Ian, with the 22 month three subscription. Hey, my Twitch alerts aren't working. Thanks. Thanks, Streamlabs. Let's refresh this. I'm really sad because the stream, the sub animation is great. Thanks, Ian, for the support. Welcome back. So again, when you're building, when you're building magic decks, you wanna you wanna be solving problems that the deck seems to have. So the question you wanna ask yourself is, what problem have you seen this deck have on stream, or what problem are you envisioning it having, and how are you solving that problem by making by making the change that you want to make? I don't I don't envision um, adding the color that you're suggesting that we add, fixing any problem that this deck feels like it has so far in the 10 or so matches I've played with it. So if we smash with this, it's either gonna gobble up a lot of their, their blockers or they're just gonna take eight and then they're gonna be dead to Oasis my thing next turn again. And with three blockers, we should be pretty good. They're just like blocking for one because they're not going to pay the echo anyways. Makes sense. This is a gold. No idea. Not a not a clue. I don't think this deck is vulnerable to combo as is. You have access to um, a plethora of hate bears out of the board. With Eldritch Revolution to find them consistently, plus plus Thought Nuts here. I think you have a very reasonable combo matchup. People people like have this idea that like counter spells mean you're good against combo decks, when in reality, a lot of the time combo decks have a much harder time with proactive disruption as opposed to reactive disruption. So they have Bushwhacker plus one card in their hand right now. Sure. Yeah, killing combo quickly. Play play some minimal disruption and then kill them. Kill them quickly. All right, so like even Goblin Grenade doesn't kill us here. And like... They can't kill the Reality Smasher with a Goblin Grenade because they don't have a card to discard. So we go block, trade, eat, tick six. Card, oh, they're going to draw a card from the Thought Not Seer. Okay, so that makes sense. But even if they Goblin Grenade this, the Thought Not Seer plus the Oasis is going to kill them on the backswing. And part of that's because the decks that play discard are usually a little bit more proactive. So you can like, uh, what's the first? Oh, they could bolt this and then draw a card and then goblin grenade this. They have two grenades to the face. Okay. Yeah, that's real. Okay, we're goblin grenading that. Okay. They need another grenade to kill my smasher. Nope. Should be dead. No, because running that many is really bad. Rawr. This is my smasher, my smasher is amazing. All right, so this is a matchup where Forge Tender is great. Um, Idle Honor Rhetoric seems good against their deck with their Surge spell. Voice of Resurgence is just good as an extra blocker. Uh, Pontiff is great. Um, like, it was okay there, but I actually think these Thought Nuts here are pretty bad in this matchup, right? Seems like on the surface, this card's going to be pretty terrible. Maybe I want like one to go fetch for when I'm evolutioning, but I really think I I don't want to draw a whole bunch of these.
we're, we're one card different from yesterday. I cut the Cataclysmic Gear Hulk for a Loaming Shaman, which this is actually a matchup for Gear Hulk would be pretty good, right? What am I cutting here? Is it a Displacer? I feel like just a 3 3 for 3 is probably not amazing. Okay, I want to do this. Do my top end. I have a little bit of a hard time in the draw here. Hopefully they end up with a hand this week to Pontiff if we get to Pontiff them. Seems very reasonable, right? It's like turn two, three, three, turn three, Kitchen Finks. Which again, might be a touch slow here. All right, sure. Great draw. Seems like a Kitchen Finks on two. I'm gonna go Finks on two, Evolution to Thragtusk on three. No, we need an Old Earthen's Glory. That would be great. Old Earthen's Glory would 10 out of 10 be in this deck. Not close. Oh, huh. I wonder, wonder if that's a punt. I wonder if the way I fetched there was a punt in case that happened. Because, like, I drew this path so I have a turn two play theoretically now. But, like, it might have been a mistake. Go ahead and play this Kitchen Finks out. We might actually turn this into a Pontiff next turn, depending on what they play out. Hey, Mor Moro Sith with the brand new 499 month subscription. Thank you very much and welcome. I really appreciate that. Subs are the best way you can support my content here, so thank you. Hopefully I don't get like double bushwhackered here. Boundary Street, sure. Yep. So I just want to make sure I don't die to a Goblin Grenade after this attack, basically. I see that the deck is running well so far. I catch up on how do I like? I like this deck a lot. So this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And they have one card left. Yeah, I think I'm just going to take this hit here, right? Let's just count this again one more time. This is 8, 11, so we're not dead here. Don't draw Pontiff. Ding. Sweet. Uh, I should attack first, right? Get in my three points of damage. <laughs> The carny mode is great. You're not wrong. I'm really happy with that one. Came out well. The smiling carn. The good adaptation. Worth noting that Cataclysmic Gear Hulk would probably be slightly better here than Pontiff would be, but at the same time, I think the Pontiff is fine. A little bit more flexible to get, easier to find early. And then, starting next turn, we'll have Displacer Pontiff and Displacer Kitchen Fink, so, like, that should probably be the end of the game. You don't need a black source, because there are only black cards in play. You run anyways. I'm gonna put a stop during my opponent's upkeep. And uh, when we get there, I'm going to displacer my Kitchen Finks. Again, this gives them the least opportunity to pick up a card to in order to kill my Kitchen Finks in response here. Yep, 
All right, so this resets its persist as well, which is nice. That's probably the game. Is my event list not refreshing either? There we go. Let's say last two weren't listed on there. Yeah, this looks really good. When will we stream Carmen Father again? I'm unsure. Not I'm kind of medium on it lately. Uh, yeah, just play voice. Let's uh, get ourselves out of Mog War Marshal into double, into double, uh, double grenade range. Put ourselves up to eleven here. You got opponent. Pontiff and this place are really good together too. Yep, yeah, this is I guess this technically isn't a concession attack, right? It's gonna be in a second here though. Oh yeah, blocking was lethal, right? Wait, where this game is all all roads lead to Rome. Oh, I forgot to play the frag test for the rubbins. What a tilt. Alright. Alright. 1 0 start to the league. Not bad. Not bad. Alright. Slow and steady. It got reprinted in one of the core sets, right? I'm pretty sure it was a core set. Yeah, Origins, that's the one. Last core set. Too bad True Name isn't God. God bless True Name not being modern legal. Um, we displaced with Drag Tusk at one point. Usually they concede shortly after that. All right, I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna like brick on a third land and die, but we're missing our third our third color as well. But I think this is 10 out of 10 to keep. Let's be a professional and draw Drowsy Temple here, hopefully. This past the turn. Let's 
something fair and mid rangey maybe. Smash Matter Shapers will be good there eventually. All right, well, that's better than better than just straight missing here, right? I'm going to leave both of these back because I don't want my opponent to be able to attack in. We block, and then they kill the thing we're blocking and a trigger off of this. So this requires them to have, like, two path to exiles here. You know, this will be the cookie crumbles. I think this keep was fine. Like, not not panning out for us, but I think I'd keep that hand, this hand again. We'll see. They're not a combo deck too, so we've got a we got a couple of turns to make something happen. No, I don't have I don't have a basic waste in my deck, which I don't think that's a mistake. Stuff, good stuff. It's gonna die to these spirits in the air. It's a shame this wasn't an evolution. Because an evolution, if we draw it, we could go get kill these with a pontiff. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, now evolution's a live draw. Kind of. Kind of. I mean, like, if we run, like, Evolution into Eldrazi Temple here, maybe we can play a game. I'm going to path this because this gives me the best possible chance to win this game. By hitting an evolution for Pontiff. This means we can't draw actual Pontiff anymore, but it is what it is. Dead. See, Drano's a cute amount of reach. I just like would rather have Drag Tusk because I don't really want... More than nine pieces of top end, I don't think. Relic seems great. Um, I like pointing out some birds in a matchup like this. Usually the games go long, get a little bit grindy. Pontiff is fine. The rest of these cards mostly seem fine here. If you go to hexpvptools.net, you can find all the bash data on there. I want to cut. No, like you just like you can't win the game from that position. Like so, I just I would just rather like not give my opponent more information about the magic cards that I'm playing. Like you could technically draw it and not be dead that turn, but like they have two more ling three lingering souls in their graveyard, so like you're not winning the game from that point. Yeah, I guess trimming an evolution is fine. These games get a little bit grindy, and they're going to kill a lot of our stuff. I can just trim a Noble Hierarch, too. I guess there's 26 mana sources. That's probably plenty. This game match isn't about going fast. It's about grinding a little bit. This hand's real good. This hand's real good. All right, big bucks, no thought sees. Big bucks, no thought sees. Big bucks, no thought sees. Ancient Tomb is great when it doesn't deal damage to you, just for the record. Deal. Nile Spellbomb. Resolves. What a, what a good sideboard card against us. Ooh, ooh, is that one good? So we would have been insulated through thought sees. How about this one, opponent? Mush are gonna smush, mush, 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 mush. Boo-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. 
Crunch. One of these is probably getting probably getting passed. That's fine. I have a second. Yeah, it hits, it hits exactly. They have a fatal push for my displacer. That's much worse for them. I guess they could have um, Liliana here, right? Like Liliana's pretty good. Just a Grim Flayer deal. It's an adorable two-two. So either they have a pass or this game is over. Probably gonna pull the trigger on this relic at the end of turn just to like try and find something to use this Eldritch Evolution on. Or another Smasher, one of the two. Oh, oh no, oh no, they're generating card advantage. They're drawing a card. Oh no, oh no. Do they have damnation in their deck? They probably have damnation in their deck, right? Which is like an out for them. Pulse would be pulse would be an out for them too. Larynx punchworthy with the 22 month resubscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome back. I appreciate the continued support. Almost, almost to that blood diamond. I think I'm still gonna cycle this because what they're dead to path, they're dead to displacer. They do a lot. Uh, displacer is not lethal actually, right? They are dead to path though. Boop. I mean, is it really that sweet? It's just like has some sweet things while also just like railing them with Eldrazi's. Is Chameleon Colossus real? Is this the card I want? I don't think so. I think I'm happy with what we did. Run it back. Yeah, kinda. I don't know. Maybe it's better than an evolution. I don't know. More more reality smashers is really good. More thought not seer seems great. Should have held priority and path the flare, right? Yeah, sure. More traps is ideal, obviously, but you probably want at least three blue green lands to fetch. So if you if you only own one trap, I'd probably play two breeding pools and then an extra fetch land in the mana base. Or maybe like two breeding pools and a botanical sanctum. How do you feel about the two birds? I think the two birds are fine. I think the, the birds help you go go fast when you need to go fast. Like, Modern's a format where you often like need to like take the pedal and push it all the way to the floor. It's fine. Goes this into this, opponent mulligans. Correct. This is not a matchup where we need to take the pedal and push it to the floor. Modern Modern is very much a format about hopping in your Jeep and running people over fairly often. Like beep beep. Beep beep, I'm a Jeep. You know, like I said, I just like, I think Chameleon Colossus is fine in this matchup, but I'm not sure I like it more than the cards I already have. So it's like, do I really want, do I want to bring it in over a card that could potentially be reasonable? 
Voice is actually a pretty good draw because it means if my opponent has a fatal push or something for this, I still have a turn two play. Yeah, this is like, I think I'm on one wooded bastion right now. Yeah, one wooded bastion. It's like our fifth brush land, basically. Like, a, just a, it's a tri land, right? It makes all three of our colors. The, the hands where you have wooded, wooded bastion, uh, uh, wooded bastion plus what's it called? Um, other stuff you're really sad, but scavenge a goose, sure. Wooded Bastion plus Eldrazi Temple is not is not happy a lot of the time, but I think it's fine. I think you want a fifth dual a fifth dry land. No, this is my money. We spent my money to play Modern for the first time in a long time. Uh, there's a Magic Online PTQ on Saturday, so I think I think I might play that. That's really good. I like to get to attacker land, please. Ideally, Ancient Tomb. All right. Liliana here. Yeah, Sunday. Did I say Saturday? I meant Sunday. I'm just like, we're what, 10 and 1 with this deck currently? If we lose this match, we'll be 10 and 2. So, like, we're winning a reasonable amount. And, like, this deck gets to play a toolbox and it gets free wins. Like, I can play ev Evolution in something competitive. Feel like I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I guess this is bad against Balestrom Pulse, right? Second Liliana, sure. You gonna Edict me? Yeah. All right, hopefully we put something right into play here. A creature, ideally. Battlefield's fine for that. They can make that smaller, sure. Hopefully they have a spell on their hand. Huh. That's interesting. Do I jam the Thought Knot? Or do I play the Noble Hierarch and ship into the Liliana? I think I play the, the Noble Hierarch and ship into the Liliana of the Last Hope. Because if they trade here and we hit a land, I can then still Thought Not Seer them. If I don't hit a land, I can, um, I can just play Voice of Resurgence. Kinda got punished for not having played voice last turn, but it was more resource efficient not to. Like now they're choosing do they want their scavenging ooze or do they want their Liliana the last hope? Okay, they choose to keep the scavenging ooze. Green, make green white. This probably means this thought not seer isn't gonna take anything out of their hand, so if they push the Liliana, I'm probably going to bin that. I guess it's possible maybe the fourth TKS was better as the Chameleon Colossus post board here. This, uh, these green black X decks tend to get their hands empty pretty quick. If one has like play play plus Liliana, we might be in a little bit of trouble. Sure. They can triple. They can triple eat out of my discard pile now. You want a different show? Okay. Relic's interesting. Um, which one do you want? You want masks? Masks? Okay. I think we just ship into the Liliana here and just like hope the top of our deck gets us something to deal with the Scavenger Goose. It's gonna be a 5-5. Five five.
I think this is fine. And like this matter shaper is going to draw a card here at some point, so like hopefully we can find one of our paths. Yeah, they're still going to get to make it a 5-5 five five though, right? Because there's three creatures here that they could eat right now. Yep, my stream schedule is listed below. Usually I start about 8.30 East Central Standard Time when my youngest goes to school. Sweet, they're, giving, they're killing the Mattery Shaper too, so you get an extra draw to path here. No, I don't think so. Like, I don't want to cycle the Relic in advance because I don't want to give them potentially more cards to, um, what's I'm searching for? I don't want more cards in my hand for them to be able to discard. Yeah, like getting a Chameleon Colossus here would actually be pretty good. Yeah, it's probably just supposed to be in my deck instead of, uh, instead of one of the Thought Not Seers. And since I drew an evolution anyways here, I think I'm just going to go ahead and pop this now. So, like, take these double hierarchs out of my bin. If they fire up Shambling Vent and attack, I'm going to double block the Shambling Vent. Gets me an elemental token, which is decent. Yep. Or it's like banking. Oh, I can't double block. I attacked. I'm dumb. Uh, am I chumping? I'm just gonna take seven. Block, sorry. I don't know where my head's at. That's where my head's at. My head's in the game. Okay, I got my game face on. Um... What are the odds there's anything other than a land in their hand? Very low. Um... I'm gonna go get Eldrazi Displacer, right? Since I have this voice, this direct disc in my hand. No, I don't. No, I think this is fine. I think I'd rather deny them a mana on this following turn. It also, like, encourages them to, like, make decisions based around having the scavenging goose. Like, okay, so like now I get to like double block here, which might encourage them to like use removal to like blow me out. And then I get to path their thing. They're probably just gonna pass priority here, but like now they might get like greedy and burn a removal spell on my voice. Yeah, like look at this. So like now my voice got path instead of my displacer getting path because they thought they thought that they were gonna get to eat my things inside of combat. And now I have a displacer and I'm gonna have a land for this drag tusk. Like, by waiting, we induced our opponent to use the removal spell in a way that was more optimal for us. By, like, the downside of just giving them a single point of life, which seems, like, super worth it, right? That's an adorable Tarmogoyf. Who's a cute little Tarmogoyf? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Who's a cute little Tarmogoyf? Super, super cute Tarmogoyf. Here's my Thrag, Dad. You've got one turn to draw a removal spell opponent, or the game ends. One single turn one single turn before thrag datterson gets displaced once or twice oh this is cute they didn't concede when they missed the removal spell this am i attacking nah let's fuck it let's just go let's go triggers let's go this place must wag tuscus in Displace my swag, Tusk Sim. So they're like on like damnation or bust here, basically. Could I have killed them? That was lethal, right? I could have just killed them. Displacing the Thrag Tusk is more fun. I'm aware now that I've looked at the board 
that I could have killed them by displacing their two blockers, but I wanted to displace the Thrag Tusk to say we did it, okay? And we weren't punished because this is a no justice stream. Welcome, welcome, welcome this morning, everyone, to our no justice stream. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I'm a TCG player and content producer. We're hanging out playing some modern this morning. We're currently 2-0 and in this league with Dar Darwin's Aliens or Aldrazi Evolution, as we've been calling it. If you're enjoying what you see, please hit that follow button. It doesn't cost you anything. It helps other people find my stuff. If you're really enjoying what you see, please consider subscribing on Twitch or becoming a patron on Patreon. Those both help support my content financially directly so I can spend more time producing content like this and less time doing other things for work. Uh, another great way you could support my content is by supporting my sponsors. Most of us are Magic players, so you're probably going to buy some of these things at some point anyway. So if you're going to buy Magic Online cards, do it with mtgotraders.com. They love to buy and sell Magic Online cards. And using code Hoagland PayPal, you could save 8% on all of your singles orders there. CoolStuffInc.com buys and sells a lot of cool stuff, including TCG singles. Using promo code Jeff5, you could save 5% on Magic, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards with them. InkedGaming.com would love to help you customize your gaming experience. Using promo code Jeff12, you could save 12% on custom playmats, mouse pads, sleeves, binders. They really do it all. You could upload your own custom artwork to them or choose from the wide range of custom artwork that they have on their website. And finally, SpareDeck.com. They offer kind of a unique service. They will rent you any physical, standard, or modern deck. You can rent a deck for a weekend or up to an entire month with them. It's a great service if you're a competitive player, someone who changes decks pretty often, or let's say you just want to try a deck before you buy it, you want to kick the tires on something like this, you can rent it for a weekend or a little while to get a feel for it. If you're someone that mostly plays online and you're just playing a paper event on occasionally, like you mostly play Magic Online and you're going to head to a Grand Prix every once in a while or an Open, great, great for that as well. Where's the pay extra to avoid it, right? Damn it, Hogland, my ad blocker's not working here. He's rigged the system. Rigged the system. My ad blocker is supposed to prevent these things. The Hoagland shilling is too strong. Any plans on playing the SCG tour again? Uh, no, probably. Is is did SCG announce that their invitationals are in the invitationals are in Roanoke again next year? I was thinking about going to the Modern Open in Columbus, but like I'm not going to go to an invitational in Roanoke, Virginia again. So like, if the invitationals in Roanoke, I really don't have any incentive to go to an open. So probably not. Like, without a player's championship, without an invitational in a reasonable place, like, what little, what little value was, was there is now gone. So, like, I make far more money just playing events from home. Hex has two $1,000 cash tournaments I can play every single weekend. Magic Online has their challenge events and PTQs that I can play most weekends. Like, there's just zero incentive to travel. I think I'm going to go ahead and keep this on the draw with a scry. Get that. Ancient Tombs on top of our deck. So the first one I didn't keep because it didn't have a play till turn three. I think on the draw with a scry in a hand like this, it's fine. Sand is not great against Storm. It's in Roanoke again? Okay, won't. No, no will not be playing Opens again next year. I, mu I might, I might play... I might play an open in Indiana if it comes to me, but I'm not driving more than two hours if there I can't go to an invitational. It it cost me close to a thousand dollars to get to and from Roanoke, Virginia, on top of you know a day of travel on either end because like flying is basically always a day. So it's it's far away. It only has a small airport in it, so you have to pay large amounts of money to fly there. I don't think we've actually played against Storm yet, right? We have a lot of good tools in our sideboard for the Storm matchup, though. I don't know. If they have a slower draw, we could be okay, but we're probably just going to die here. And again, just like, this is one of the things that's just like about modern and magic and journalists. So, Hex is so fucking great. Just like, could you imagine how much better modern would be if you could look at your opponent and go, oh, you're playing Storm, I should mulligan this hand because it's not good against Storm. Just, like, the amount of added value you get just by, like, getting to make educated mulliganing decisions in the game.
They're playing some kind of combo deck. I suppose there's a chance they're the Through the Breach combo deck, but my money's on Ritual Gifts at our end step and then untap and kill us. But, but it really isn't. So, like, people talk about that. I gain far more presence. Just, okay, so, like, take a weekend where I go play an event, right? I would gain far more presence if I did a 24-hour stream that weekend. And it actually takes less time out of my life. Like, a 24-hour stream is, like, a 36-hour commitment once I, I factor in sleeping, back, sleeping to rest back up a little bit. Whereas going to play an event is two days. It's, like, a 60-hour commitment. And, like, you really don't, I really get less exposure for that. Like, even a weekend where I'm, like, tearing up and open, I'm going to be on camera four times if I'm really lucky. And, like, whereas here, I could stream literally for 24 hours. And, like, YouTube pays pennies. The YouTube ad revenue alone is probably better from a 24-hour stream than it is from traveling to an open and doing anything other than top eighting. I do intend to do another long stream at some time soon. Probably this month. I need to work out the details with my wife. I, I intend to start doing 24-hour streams with some regularity. Maybe, maybe once every other month or so. It's been a couple months since the last one, so I think, I think I'm going to talk to my wife and see if we can work something out over the holidays. Hey, look at that. They cast Pyretic Ritual and then Gifts and Given. Now they're going to untap and kill us. The Wall of Roots Anniversary. All right. Um, well, we're definitely bidding Boral. And then we're probably just supposed to bid mana from that point. So Desperate Ritual is like minorly better than Pyretic Ritual. So usually, usually what we do for people that haven't watched my 24-hour streams in the past, what I do is... I set up a 12 hour stream and then I set a donation goal. Whereas if we hit enough donations, usually it's like 200 bucks or so. So that way, if I'm gonna be miserable, Christmas party stream confirmed. Steve Flogger boss with the cheer. Thank you, bud, I appreciate it. Um, usually that way, if we hit the donation goal, I've been paid for my misery. As a dancing monkey, monkey I'm happy to be miserable for 24 hours if I'm paid, paid okay to do so. Like that's, that's great, you know? Because if I do the first 12-hour stream as like a just, hey, here's a long stream, and then I get like, you know, 200 bucks for the second half, that's like 15 bucks an hour. That's fine. <laughs> I do actually intend to, my wife and I streamed putting up the Christmas tree last year and decorating our living rooms. So I think we're going to do that again because that was fun. For shaving the beard, right? It's been a while since we've done that. People, I don't know why anyone would want to look at my ugly face. Am I dead jet opponent? One ritual, two ritual, three, four. I assume we're dead. The classic kill you on four without an accelerant creature, like... Kitchen Fings plays well as with Evolution, man. Look, there's, there's, there's Squid Billies in my deck. There's Kitchen Finks in my deck. Everything is wrong, okay? I am looking forward to playing the Hex Meme deck later today. I'm looking forward. I think we're going to meme in Hex after we're done with Magic today. Grape shot. Just ban fucking grape shot. Stop, stop banning all of the little things and just actually ban. They have a remand. They have a remand here. We're getting remand grape shot or just second grape shot. Just, just look. The storm deck is infinitely more fair 
if they just have to go off with empty the warrens and then have a goblin bushwhacker or something like that to kill you in the same turn it gives people the chance to play engineered explosives and all these other cards that are interactive i just want modern to actually be interactive it's all i want out of life it's all i want <sighs> i know it's asking a lot though i assume we're dead here since they didn't kill my creatures I'm sorry I have to make you click through this opponent. You assume you have a, I'm going to concede when you put the second grape shot on the stack. All right, God bless. Sorry, sorry I had to click through the first one. Welcome to Magic Online. Yes, Legacy is, is a very interactive format. It's great. It's definitely my favorite format in Magic. All right, so these are fine. This is fine. This is fine. Is Loaming Shaman good enough? Probably not. Rag Tusk is not good. Displacer nonsense is not good. Pontiff is fine to keep in. I'm not, what, is this a path to exile matchup? I almost feel like it's not, right? Is that is that insane? Is it insane to cut my path to exiles in this matchup? I haven't I haven't played this matchup at all, but like my gut says I just want to like put Eidolon and Teague into play and then like try and run them over, right? I I think I think Eldrazi Temple, Urza's Tower, and uh, Mox Opal are all shit cards and shouldn't be legal as well. Just so, just so, just so the, the just so everyone is clear. So there's no there's no delusions here. If you're new, these are all crap cards and they make modern miserable. But Grape Shot's also not great. Yeah, Simeon Spirit Guide. I'm just I'm just gonna submit like this. I think I think I just want to put a put some discard, put some poopers on the table, and just like smash. Keep, I guess. Path kind of slows them down. It like takes them off of one mana in one direction, but leaves them more mana in another direction. So like people that aren't terribly bright all the time talk about how modern needs counterspell to fix its problems. No, it doesn't. Counterspell doesn't stop people that are doing Simeon Spirit Guide Mox Opal bullshit. The Simeon Spirit Guide Mox Opal nonsense is happening long before you get to hold up blue blue for your stupid counterspell. Sorry, it is just just the truth, just the cleanest, the cleanest truth that exists. Correct, yeah, I would love to be able to play Ponder, Ponder and Preordain. I don't like I really don't want to play against Death Shadow that has days in it. I, I really don't want to play against a Death Shadow deck that has four copies of days. That sounds like the most miserable experience I could possibly think of. I don't, people, people like, I don't want better answers to the fast degenerate decks. I just want the fast degenerate decks to not be legal. Can we just like slow the format down a full turn? It's not a turn four format. Can we make it a turn four format? Like, actually a turn four format? So now, while I'm thinking about it... Death Shadow with Mental Misstep? Oh, Lord. Lordy, Lordy. Lordy, Lordy. I'm gonna crack one of these. Just need action. Now that I drew action, am I smashing it? Do I need to leave this up? I probably need to leave this up this turn, right? Yeah, I think I have to leave Relic up. It's, this feels like a end step gifts. I feel like if I cast this, there's a good chance they just like cast gifts and kill me. Through one one activation here.
Yeah, I agree, Ryan. But, but also, a big part of why the aggro decks are turn three decks is because, like, everyone in modern starts at, like, 15 health, right? Like, basically, everyone starts somewhere between 15 and 17. Like, most aggro decks can probably deal, like, 15 by turn three, sure. Uh, I've been grape shot and manamorphosed at this point. There's a good chance we're just dead with this relic up. Nah, two modes, that just doesn't happen. That's like Frontier, right? Just like people don't play formats and are interested in formats that they can't actually play. Just like doesn't, does it exist? It's not real. Yeah, I think so. I think it's like if they go for stuff here, I'm supposed to just like hold the relic until they go to Past in Flames. Well, the, the problem is, Chumos, is that player feedback goes in every direction. So, like, I, I understand how much white noise they're dealing with, right? Like, people love modern how it is right now. It's the most popular competitive format Magic has. So, like, there's a very strong argument for just saying, no, nothing should change in modern because it's popular. So, like, why, why mess with a good thing? And the fact that... I don't enjoy it and maybe you don't love where it's at right now doesn't mean there aren't people that don't like where modern is at this current point in time. I think you're wrong, Ryan. I'm just I'm 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 not afraid to tell you you're wrong. I think I think you're wrong. I think pot and twin are fine. I I wanna play I wanna play with fun, powerful cards. I don't like Playing with those cards is, is better than playing against, like, Tron and Eldrazi, like. Look, Standard having been rancid for a while is a different statement. You know, Mots Watsi's, like, pooped the bit on their Standard format for a little while now. That's... Magic is fun and interesting and interactive. Just... This, this is healthy for me. This is good. This is... This is encouraging me to not spend $30 in my Saturday playing a PTQ. This is, this is good, this is healthy. This is why I spent $12 an hour and a half this morning to convince myself to not pay $30 an all day Sunday to play Modern. People just like it because they like, people like playing with their old cards. They don't like buying new standard decks all the time. And Legacy's too expensive to play. If Legacy wasn't so expensive, people probably wouldn't play Modern because it's a wasteland. Like, let's, let's be honest. If people could play Interactive Magic for like not $3,000, they'd probably play Legacy. They'd, they'd probably play Legacy. Yeah, man! Double Ancient Tomb, let's go! Let's go! If I, if I couldn't borrow Legacy decks, I'd never play it. It's way too expensive. What you got over there, opponent?
Ah, you know what? This is, you know what my favorite thing about streaming is? This is not, this is not a democracy. It's a dictatorship and I'm the dictator. So when mouth breathing magic players come in here and go, hur, hur, Blood Moon is only good against you because there's four colors in your deck. You go, yes, Blood Moon is good against me because there's four colors in my deck. But you know what it's also fucking good against? It's good against the two color decks in modern. Blood Moon is an uninteresting and non-interactive card that you don't really have good tools to beat. A lot of times it just comes down and ends the game in this, this, you know, uninteresting manner where one player just didn't have any decisions that fucking mattered. And I get it. You don't want your opponent to have decisions that matter, and that's fine. I do. I want to play this interactive game of magic. I want to play my cards, and then my opponent's going to play more of their cards, and then we're going to go back and forth across this game that's ideally going to last somewhere, let's say, in the the 8 to 10 turn range. Like, I would love it if all of my games had meaningful decisions and lasted close to or into the double digits worth of turns. Cards like Blood Moon don't enable those types of games to happen. They, they just don't. And you can tell me that it's because my deck technically has four colors and this one does, but as someone who's been Blood Mooned out of games playing a two color deck, one of which is red, Blood Moon is a miserable magic card. It is. And as someone who's Blood Mooned plenty of people in his time, Blood Moon is a, a card that makes someone miserable. It, it just, that's just what it does. It's not interesting. It just makes someone miserable. Blood Moon actually isn't good against Tron. As someone who spent a lot of time Troning recently, Blood Moon is far better against mid-range interactive decks like what I'm playing than it is against decks like Tron. Yeah, tracks with the cheer. Preach it! With the bomb afterwards as well. Can we just make it four to seven? I'd take anything over what we have now. Can we Smasher! 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 I'm so unlucky. Just, just the unluckiest. Crunch. Yeah, like, at least when I'm blood mooning people on Magic Online, I get to immediately get into another match. When, like, I blood moon someone in paper, and I'm like, all right, you didn't get to cast any spells. We're done in seven minutes. Uh, I guess I'll wait for the next round. Yeah, and that's another thing. If you're new here, you haven't heard that part of the rant before. Like, just because you think a card is miserable doesn't mean you can't and shouldn't play it. In fact, if you think a card is miserable powerful, you probably should be playing it if you want to be competitive. Because if a card is actually too good, register the card because you're going to win games of magic with it. You're just, it's just, it's just the truth. When I say Eldrazi Temple is miserable and there's three Eldrazi Temples here in play, it is miserable, but it's really good. That's why it's miserable. So that's why we're playing it. <laughs> uh. All right, they don't have an O-Stone. We'll be in a pretty good spot. I'm going to play this Kitchen Finks out. We're just like not in a position to beat an O-Stone. So we're going to jam Finks and hope they don't have it. Yep, yep, Blood Moon. Blood Moon is not good against Tron. Disruption plus pressure is good against Tron, and Blood Moon does count as disruption, but Blood Moon on its own does not beat Tron like it beats this deck on its own, or beats other mid-range decks on its own. I mean, you can't read into the pauses on Magic Online, because, like, there's a very good chance, like, their cat or their toddler just, like, knocked their drink over on their keyboard, and they're just, like, scrambling to clean it up a little bit here for a second. The pause could have been, they have it, but they also have a dismember, so they're not sure what they want to do there. They didn't get, they have Tron, like they didn't get a Tron piece with the scrying. So, the artwork on this card is so beautiful, but the rest of the card is so ugly, the frame is just like, you've ruined it. Why, why would you ruin a perfectly good thing? Okay, well, we get to attack here, and then we get to play Thought Not Seer post-combat, so, you know. Yes, Sun and Moon is an amazing matchup for Tron.
And you know what? You have seven basics. There's going to be a bunch of games statistically where you just don't have some of those basic or fetch lines to find them. Just, just how math works. All right, so they did have the dismember, which they now can't cast until they find a thing. Um, they're not dead through the Karn, right? So I need to take the Karn. They're going to be dead through the World Breaker. If they rip a Tron piece and cast Ulamog, I'm going to die, but I can't beat that anyways. So let's just take Karn, play this, pass the turn. Oh, I could have blinked my things for two points of health, right? The, the two points of health aren't going to matter. This game's going to be over before that's relevant. And plus, I want to leave this up for World Breaker. <sighs> I guess they're dead to Smasher, right? Please take my lands away from me. Please take my lands away from me and not my threats. Please be stupid. Don't take my thought offs here. Be greedy. Yeah, Tron, 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 Tron. Rats, they saw the line. Unfortunate for us. Who are we? We knew what was happening. Look, I just, I talked about what was going on because it's the truth. It's just like, this is the best possible chance for us. We're going to pretend that something other than them getting a Tron piece could happen here. Smasher! Smasher! Hey yo! Hey yo! Hey hey yo! Hey yo! Boo doo doo! Doo doo Lucky, lucky, lucky! Lucky, lucky, lucky! Magic is a skill game and a better player always wins! I am so goddamn professional. This is why. This is why I play the children's card game for money. Right here. That's what I'm talking about. That's why I play the children's card game for money. This is a no justice stream, ladies and gentlemen. No justice stream. All right, so this is usually okay. What am I doing here? Eric says, okay, Displacer Thrag Tusk is probably too slow. It's probably too slow. Do I want to run Path to Exile? Nah, I need to beat their Worm Coils, right? I feel about this. I feel about this. This place, like, I feel like we should probably kill them faster than that, right? Is it, like, better than voice? I like that voice evolves into Thought Not Seer. Yeah, it's Rexade's probably too cute. Let's just leave it a Displacer and it's a 3-3. Three, three. All right, let's go. Really, we can just hop in the reality smasher jeep one more time and run our opponent out of the game. Tap three lands, play a five five. Deal. Yeah, probably. It's only nine thirty, right? This is match four already. Yeah, kind of. The displacer can interact too, though. Like displacer on a pivotal turn for their blockers is really important. The match we won against Tron yesterday came down to that. We're going to meme in Hex at the end of the magic today. I might run Grishel Brand back after this. That's, a, that's another deck I could see playing on Sunday. The Grishel Brand deck's kind of obnoxious, and it's also meme-tastic, which is just, like, added bonus. If you haven't played Grishel Brand, let me tell you, killing people on the second turn, it's pretty good! Pretty good! Yeah, Candle's got a bunch of cards. One of the best, one of the best decks in the new format. 
How do I feel about this? A bunch of grizzly bears on the draw. Who doesn't love grizzly bears? It is not, it is not ordered in any particular way. You send me money, I add it to the list, and then as I feel like playing them, I play them. Yeah, pretty sure this is a keep, right? Just like we draw a Thought Nazi or a Smasher, we can play it ahead of curve. I've, there are literally a bunch of streams on my YouTube channel. Streamed it with, streamed with it a bunch. Check out, check out, check out the YouTubes. It's ordered by, that's true. The more fair the deck is that you submit, the longer it's going to take for me to play it. Just, just, just so everything is clear. Oh, it is, it, it is ordered democratically. That's fair. I forgot about that. The more money you send me, the faster I will play your deck. In fact, as a simple dancing monkey, Declan, Dad is trying to chill on stream. I need you to calm down, okay? Just calm down so I can chill on stream, okay? For 50 bucks, I'll drop what I'm doing and immediately play your deck after I finish my current league. That's, that's just like an open offer. But for the normal $12 donation as a sub or $20 donation as a non-sub, you get into the queue and eventually, eventually I get to it. The memeier it is, the sooner I get to it. Speaking of dad, dad's trying to be a sellout. <laughs> For a hundred bucks, I will concede the current match and drop my league. Yes. For for one hundred dollars, we will immediately stop what we are doing and switch to your deck. Can cannot sell out harder. For 50 bucks, you, you move to the top of the queue and we finish the league and then get to you. For 100 bucks, we'll stop what we're doing immediately. That's 10 out of 10. This league only costs 12 bucks. For 100, out. Out. All right, that's an excellent draw, right? We get to go Temple Garden, play this Voice of Resurgence, and then next turn, get a Thought Nuts here. Look, anyone who tells you that they don't have a price to do something hasn't been offered enough money yet. Everyone has a price for almost anything. The, the answer is, what is that price is a very reasonable, reasonable question. But if you're telling yourself you don't have a price period, you're lying to yourself. You are. Let's, let's be honest. This is a stream that's all about honesty. I'm not here to lie to you. All right, what you got? Show me what you're working with. That is no Tron piece. All right, um, all right, just take O-Stone. It's unfortunate that there's a tower on top of their deck. Their hand's really good if they didn't have this tower on top of their deck. Five dollars and chicken nuggets go a long way. That's a that's great. That's a great a great saying. Five dollars and chicken nuggets go a long way. So we're gonna go Teague next turn, and then we're gonna play Teague next turn, and then thankfully Teague Teague as the quality the quality Kith Kid advisor that he is, he suggests my opponent does not play worm or does not play card, and hopefully they play worm coil. Then that's a great draw. Get out from under my desk. Did you poop? Did you poop? Something smells kind of crappy. Oh, yeah. All right, sorry. We got to take a moment from them stirring try. Oh. <laughs> Stop it. That's your belly, yep.
<laughs> Are you streaming while Dad was gone? You streaming while Dad's gone? Why didn't you play the God Act Declan? Should have played the God Act Teague. For those of you that are new to the stream and unaware, I uh, I am a father of two, and while I stream in the morning, while my oldest is at preschool, but Declan is home. Dad Jungle Gym, best Jungle Gym NA. Dad Jungle Gym, best Jungle Gym NA. All right, no O-Stone. No O-Stone, don't do me dirty. Don't do me dirty. No. <laughs> Big bucks, no stone, don't stone me. <laughs> there you go, are you happy? Is that what you wanted? Uh, up, down. Yep, there's Swag Dedderson. All right, so second path is lethal here. This is really bad thing. Hop it. Hop it. Hop it. I think evolution and smash are lethal too. They are the hop it. Hop it. Hop it. No, I thought not. Okay. Um. What does that let me do? So if I attack with everything, they block here and take four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Bed. 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 Let's play this. Worm coil Karn. It's probably Worm Coil, right? Or is it Karn? That's probably Worm Coil, right? Feels like Worm Coil. Alright, and then if I play this Noble Hierarch, now if they block here. They take six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and they die. So they have to block this elemental, right? They block here. They take lethal. They block here. They take lethal. They block here. They take lethal. So attack like this. They have to chump. We're not beating an O stone. And like them playing Karn involves taking God Act off the table, and with them going to two. You want to watch the bus? You want to get down? Okay, you can get down. All right. Well, we're two zero against Mono Green Tron with this deck. I doubt the Tron matchup is good, but we're two zero against it. Alright, let's stand for a little bit. Enjoy the ride, Twitch. Apprentice of Bolas with the $100 donation. Alright, I gotta pull my stream lines up and see what the message says. <laughs> I need to put the message back on stream. Tess or Modern Storm, you pick, but dance for us. All right. All right. We said, we know the rules. We said for $100. We said for $100, we'd concede. We'd concede the league immediately. All right. I am not. I am not a liar. Thank you very much for the donation. All right. I'm going to see if this queues really quick, and I'm going to give someone a free win. Let me, I'm going to give someone a free win while I find a deck list. What are we, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? So, do we want to see Modern Storm or Tess? What would we prefer? I think I'd rather play Tess, right? Tess is more fun. Do I still have Tess in here? I don't think I have either of those. <laughs> um, Tess, do we, do we want to see Tess? Hey, boys. There you go, buddy. Sharing his good fortune. Yeah, man, you know, pass it out. What is Tess? Tess is the epic storm. It's a legacy deck. All right, let's go find Brian. Let's go. Let's go. Net, net, net deck, Mr. Cook. Legacy challenge from 11.5. Yep, sounds good. 
Hey, look, I've been paired for my match. All right. Test is YOLO storm. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Great. I am I am a lot of things, but I am not a liar. I am a lot of things, but I am not a liar. So we said we said we'd concede and immediately drop the lead. I even got my money back from this one too, because we were 3-1. <laughs> 